guys. Hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. On this channel, we try to cover all things reality, TV news, and gossip, as well as trending topics. And here lately, we have been covering the situation going on with June Shannon regarding her granddaughter, Caitlin, who is 11 years old, and this custody battle that is going on between June Shannon and Michael Cardwell, who was married to June Shannon's oldest daughter, Anna Cardwell, from 2014 to 2017. And Michael took on the responsibility and the duties of being the father to Caitlin, June's granddaughter, Anna's oldest daughter, despite the fact that Michael is not the biological father of Caitlin. Um, he took on the responsibility. Michael started dating Anna back then, Anna Shannon, Mama June's oldest daughter. Michael and Anna started dating when baby Caitlin was only eight months old. Caitlin's biological father was not in the picture at all. So Michael stepped up and he jumped right in to that parental father figure role. Right after Michael and Anna got married, whenever they got married, Caitlin was just a couple of months shy of her second birthday. She wasn't quite two yet, right? Well, after they got married, Michael and Anna moved to Alabama from Georgia. All of Anna's family is in Georgia, but Michael has family in Alabama. His dad, I think, owns a business in Alabama. So financially, it was the best opportunity for them to move to Alabama. So they did that. Anna, Michael, and Caitlin moved to Alabama. And they lived there for a few years. Now, while they were there, from what my source told me, June visited once. Yes, once. June visited one time. And that was, I think they said it was Kylie when Anna had the baby shower for Kylie. And it was also Caitlin's birthday or something like that. Like she, June visited Anna one time in the few years that Anna lived in Alabama. And it was for some sort of special event that she was there. Now, Anna was estranged from June for the most part when she was living in Alabama. They had a very uh, tumultuous relationship due to the fact that June's boyfriend had our Anna when Anna was eight years old. And um, June did not believe Anna whenever it came out that this was happening. June told Anna, you're lying. He would never do that to you. Why are you doing that to me? They became estranged for several years uh, when Anna was younger. He lived with her grandmother. Um, and then when Anna, again, as an adult, they became estranged again. Even though they mended their relationship, uh, when Anna was around 14, 15 years old, they did mend their relationship. They had another estrangement after Anna's, the guy that assaulted Anna, June's ex-boyfriend, Mark McDaniel, got out of prison for this. He got out of prison for Ari, Anna. And right after he got out of prison, June linked up with him, photos, hit the interwebs, and once again, Anna and her mom become estranged. So when Anna and Michael split up and separated and ultimately went on to divorce, Anna did, call, did not call June. She did not call June and say, Mama, can you come get me? She called Sugar Bear and Jennifer and was like, uh, can you guys come get me to bring me back to Georgia? Now, once Anna got back to Georgia, she lived with Sugar Bear and Jennifer for four months. And then she actually um, got a trailer with a friend right down the road from Michael Carwell's mom. Um, and Michael Carwell's mom was very involved in Anna's life, Caitlin's life, Kylie's life. Michael, when Anna came back from, from Alabama to, to Georgia and moved back to Georgia, Michael went about four weeks without seeing any of them because when Anna left, um, he had given Anna, you know, what money they had to kind of come back to Georgia to start a new life. So he had to work long enough to kind of, you know, build up a little bit of money to come down the visit. So after about four weeks, he finally did come down and he visited the girls. And after that, he would come down um, like every other week, every third week or something like that until he moved back. He did move back to he left for uh alabama where his family was and came back to, now his mom lives in georgia but his dad and all that side of the family lives in alabama but he did come back to georgia so he could be close to his to the girls 
And once he moved back, he got the girls every other week and, you know, right back into, every, you know, their life or whatever. Um, so when Anna passed away, as we all know, June Shannon filed for emergency, emergency temporary custody of Caitlin. Callie uh, obviously automatically went to her biological father, Michael. Callie has been with Michael since the day before Anna passed away. Anna passed away on December 9th, which was a Saturday. That Friday, Kylie went to her dad's house. Unfortunately, Caitlin was there and did witness her mom passing away. I say unfortunately because I'm like, she was 11 year old. She was 11 years old. She, she really have sat there and watched her mom take her last breath. I don't know if that's the best thing for her. I, I just don't know. But she didn't want to leave her mom's side because when Michael and them showed up to get the girls, Caitlin was like, you know, I don't want to leave. I don't, I don't want to leave because this is my mom and, you know, I'm scared something's going to happen. So she stayed and she was there to witness that. She passes away from what my sources told me. Michael, you know, contacted June to see about getting Caitlin and was basically told like, oh, no, we're going to keep Caitlin. And I wanted us to keep Caitlin. My sources tell me that it was voiced to Michael and Eldridge and several other people. And I've actually talked to at this point, like five people that have talked to that had talked to Anna themselves and said that Anna, her desire for the girls was for Michael and Eldridge to have them back and forth like they had been doing. And obviously for June to see the girls whenever she wanted to, but it, for it not to be a June have one girl, Michael have one girl, and for them to be split up. Every source that I've talked to has said that she wanted Michael and Eldridge to have the girls one week, one week, one week, one week, one week, one week. Thank you, April. I love me some April. Hey, guys. So we're in the midst of this, what's turned into a nasty custody battle between Michael and June. And it started off pretty civil, I guess you could say, when June filed her emergency custody petition. She said on the court filing that there was nobody else that would be interested in taking Caitlin. She kind of, she was the only one. So obviously the judge signed off on it, but there, it was only temporarily. It was only, you know, the judge signed off on it only temporarily. And there will be a court date set where um, June will have to go in and prove that she's fit. And if anybody else is interested and thinks they legally have a right to get custody of Caitlin, they would show up and, you know, that's where they say their piece. And then the judge will decide, okay, wait. We're going to have to take some time to figure this out. Um, so June filed that paperwork saying that nobody else would be interested. Now, Michael filed his paperwork saying, hey, interested, I'm her dad. Like, I am literally who she calls dad. She has known no other dad besides me, except when Eldridge came into her life and Eldridge's stepdad, I'm dad. You know, um, when, she, when she started calling someone dad as a, a baby, a 10-month-old, it was me, you know, like, I don't even think Caitlin understood that Michael wasn't her dad until she got a little older. I don't think she really, you know, understood it. Um, but either way, in his filing and what Michael had to file is called something like the Equitable Care Act. And June made a big deal out of this Equitable Care Act. Equitable. She's not she's not um, equity. How dare you? She's not an effing house. Now, I told you guys the other day. My husband grew up in Georgia, so I was able to get in contact with a lawyer in Georgia. It's not a lawyer that has anything to do with the case. It's just someone, you know, because if you talk to a Louisiana lawyer, laws are different. So I really wanted to talk to a lawyer out of Georgia. And I did talk to a lawyer out of Georgia the other day who told me that um, in like 2019, a, a law was passed, introduced or whatever called the Equitable Caregiver Act. And it is for relatives, family, friends, someone that, um, I see a lot of people saying like, oh, she's not his biologically. So he has no, he don't have no legal rights to her, but that's exactly what the, um, equitable care act is. It's if like two parents pass away and there's somebody there that, you know, maybe an uncle or an aunt or a family friend or a neighbor that has been there and in the child's life that rather than the child going to foster care or something like that, that that person could step up and take custody of that child. 
And the word equitable is not as in equity, it's as in fair, like fair. Um, so it's actually pretty perfect for somebody like Michael because it's some, if you can prove that you've been a part of that person's life um, in any way, shape, form, or fashion, financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, you qualify for that. So when June threw this big fit about equity, what the F, she really just didn't know what she was talking about because that's like an actual law that was passed for a case like this. So it's being used the exactly the correct way, right? Um, so he filed his Equitable Care Act um, petition for custody. And in it, he explains, hey, I got with her mom when she was eight months old. Her dad's never been in the picture. I was married to her mom from the time that Caitlin was um, right before she turned two until she was like five years old. After we got a divorce, I still stayed in her life. And in this petition, he talks about how this relationship was fostered by her mom. Like as far as it was known, we were her parents. I was dad, Anna was mom, and this was what it was. And it talks about that in these documents, right? And it also brings up the fact that June was not a part of Anna's life, nor was she a part of Caitlin's life that much. The June and Anna had a very uh, sordid relationship. It was very tumultuous and she was in and out. And he just didn't think that June, somebody who has been so inconsistent in not only her daughter's life, but her grandchild's life as well. She just, he just didn't feel like June would be the best interest of the child, right? So he filed his filing. And listen, I've went over all these filings to date um, on this channel. So I will link it in the description box below if you're watching on replay. I'll link the other video where I went over all the documents that's been filed thus far. So he filed that. And then June filed her answer to his petition. And in her answer, she's really throwing the low blows because and her answers were very wrong and could be established by easy Google searches. So when June answered Michael's petition, she said, oh, no, no, no. To my knowledge, they didn't even start dating until Caitlin was two, which is not the case. They got married before she even turned two. So obviously they started dating before she turned two. Um, she also mentions Caitlin's dad has never even met Caitlin, which is also not true. Caitlin's dad has met Caitlin. Um, it was once and it was right after she was born, but still. June made a lot of allegations about how Michael was inconsistent in Caitlin's life. And the only point that he was even like remotely inconsistent was immediately after the divorce. It was when Anna and the girls left Alabama and moved to Georgia. And um, it was like, you know, when you're getting divorced, you're trying to split everything up. Money is all out of whack because, you know, you're having to split things up. You're having to figure out who's going to do what and who's going to pay what. And especially if you're a young couple like they were, they were very young. They're like 20s, you know, probably living pretty much paycheck to paycheck. Or if if they were a little bit more comfortable, it wasn't too, too much. You know what I'm saying? So he did go a few weeks right after they split up where he did not see the kids. But it wasn't because he was just trying to be consistent. It wasn't because he didn't want to. It was because financially he just couldn't. Um, but I mean, he even left Georgia, left Alabama to move back to Georgia so he could see his kids, right? So she makes all these allegations about how he's been inconsistent. And then she says that her and Anna have had a pretty great relationship, a pretty solid relationship, except one time that they had a little bit of an estrangement. She says one time they had a little bit of an estrangement, but other than that, they've had a pretty solid relationship. And I'm like, that is not true. Literally, her lawyer, the fact that her lawyer typed this up and didn't even do like a quick Google search to see how many estrangements happened and how much Anna talked about. I mean, I've been doing research on this and I have, I'm finding interviews where Anna talks about how her and her mom don't talk. I'm finding Instagram lives where Anna talks about how her and her mama doesn't talk. All these things. So anyways. June also throws the allegation out there that Michael was abusive to Anna and Caitlin. She talks about how Michael, yeah, Michael paid for the girls' tuition for school, but it was only so he didn't have to pay child support. So she makes all these allegations, right? 
So today when I was looking at some court documents, it hit me, it dawned on me. I'm like, why don't I look at the court documents between Pumpkin and June whenever Pumpkin filed for custody of Alana? And I'm like, I, I want to look at those, right? So upon looking at those, actually the first set of documents that I purchased, because I do have to purchase these, the very first set of documents that I purchased, I was like, oh, oh goodness. Um, I absolutely positively think that Michael's attorney could use Pumpkin's petition to show, hey, listen, if June Shannon's own daughter, Lauren Shannon, filed for custody of her sister, June's youngest child, and st- made these claims against her, and this was only two years ago, then maybe we should not be giving her her grandchild. So we are going to go over Pumpkin's petition to get custody of Alana. In the petition, you guys, Alana makes a statement. Thank you so much, Adriana, for the super sticker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I probably spent about $40 today um, filing, buying these documents. So thank you. So not only are we going to see how Pumpkin feels about June and why Pumpkin feels that she should have Alana, but we there's also a statement that was written by Alana. And she says she's 16, but she's like, listen, I feel comfortable with my sister. I feel safer at my sister's. And what's even more, you guys, is in Alana's um, affidavit, she says, I love my mom and I would like visitations with my mom, but I would like for them to be supervised. So if just two years ago, your own 16-year-old daughter did not want to live with you, wanted to live with her sister, and even more so, she stated, if she does see you, she needs somebody there. She doesn't even feel 100% safe. To be with you alone. She herself requested for her visitations with her mom to be supervised, you guys. So I think, and listen, I'm sure Michael's attorney has this already. I mean, that would have been, I mean, I'm not a lawyer and it took me a little bit longer, but if I was a lawyer, that probably would have been one of the first things that I did is, hey, you know what? There was a court case that happened just two years ago with June concerning Alana. So let me go look at this. And a lot of people is like, you know, June didn't lose custody of Alana. Technically, she didn't. But I think if Pumpkin would have pushed it, like, to really, she she kind of threatened it. Like, hey, sign over custody or we'll take you to court. And Pumpkin, and June's like, okay, here, let me sign it. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go over these court documents, you guys. Um, oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, thank you so much, plant lady. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank y'all for the super stickers. I do appreciate that. Yeah, June signed Alana over before they took her. So yes. Thank you guys so much for the super chats and the super stickers. I appreciate y'all so much. Okay. So um, this was not the very first thing that was filed. The very first thing that I found that was filed was actually a child support worksheet where it documented June's monthly income and Pumpkin's monthly income, and it calculated their child support. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, I'll show it to you guys because you guys remember whenever we heard that June was going to have to pay like $800 a month child support um, because they were basing it off her disability and not her TLC salary, um, or WeTV salary, sorry, her reality tv salary well in this worksheet you guys it it, it it's 35 it has june making thirty five thousand dollars a month it has pumpkin making ten thousand dollars a month and then it's i don't know i don't know it says it looks like it's saying that june's gonna have to pay like seventeen hundred dollars but i've never looked at one of these before so i don't really know what i'm looking at but anyways let's go over this because this is interesting i tell you interesting okay so it was filed December 6, 2021. And so that was literally just barely over two years ago. And I know, I do want to say, I do understand Mama June has changed. She is allegedly sober. I'm not going to go so far as to say that I think she is 100% sober because when I had Jordan McCollum on my channel 
like last year, he said, you know, that when him and June were living together, he found something in her top drawer and he confronted her about it. Um, anyways, okay. Now comes the petitioner, Lauren Michelle Efret, in the above styled case and shows the court as follows. The probate court of Henry County issued a temporary guardianship of minor child Alana Francis Thompson, female child, female child born August 2005, granting the petitioner guardianship of minor child on a temporary basis on April 29, 2019. So she was actually, Pumpkin was actually granted like temporary custody on April 29, 2019. Now this is like the more permanent request that they're making, right? The petitioner is the biological sister of the minor child. The petitioner is an adult of the age of majority, which how old was Pumpkin? Let's see. I should have looked that up. Let's see really quickly. Uh, so she was 21. Pumpkin was 21 years old when this was filed. Now, she was only 19 years old when she actually took Alana in. She was only 19. Okay, so the petitioner has served as the guardian of the minor child since the issuance of the temporary guardianship to the present day. The minor child has consistently resided with the petitioner and her husband. The petitioner and the respondent are both residents of Wilkinson County. The respondent may be personally served at her residence. Exactly, she did. Okay. Um, the petitioner does not know of any other person, not a party to the proceeding, who has physical custody of the child or who claims to have custody or visitation rights with respect to the child. All right, so this is the first page. Here is the second page. <clears throat> the petitioner has functioned as the primary custodian of the minor child since acquiring temporary guardianship in April of 2019. Therefore, the petitioner asserts that it is in the best interest of the minor child for her to be awarded sole physical custody of the minor child. The petitioner fears, okay, here's where it gets interesting. The petitioner fears for the safety and well-being of the minor child when she is with, when she is in physical custody of the respondent. So she's saying, Pumpkin's saying, I fear, I fear for Alana's safety when she's with Mama June. Um, the petitioner asserts that she is in better position mentally and physically to care for the minor child than the respondent. The respondent has exhibited poor judgment in the past regarding decisions pertaining to the minor child. The respondent has suffered with mental, psychological disabilities. Hence, the petitioner asserts that it is in the best interest of the minor child that she be awarded sole legal custody. The respondent has not exercised, okay, the respondent has not exercised consistent parenting time with the minor over the past three years. The respondent has failed to provide financial support for the maintenance and care of the minor child for greater than three years. I find it kind of ironic that June is filing an answer to Michael's request for custody. June saying, oh, well, you know, he only paid tuition for two kids to get out of paying um, child support for one kid when you didn't even pay child support for one kid, June Shannon. Since the issuance of the temporary guardianship, there has been a material change in circumstances warranting a modification of custody, visitation, and support of the minor child. Petitioner believes that the respondent is not psychologically, physically, and financially fit to serve as a primary custodian of the minor child. The respondent has engaged in erratic behavior that leads the petitioner to believe that she is unable 
to address the best interest of the minor child. The petitioner asserts that she is more stable financial financial she is in a more stable financial position than the respondent and therefore equipped to meet and maintain the needs of the minor child. The petitioner asserts that she maintains a stable home environment and possesses a multitude of familial support to assist her with serving as a primary sole custodian of the minor child if the court deems fit to award her such distinction. And, you know, this wasn't that long ago. This was literally two years ago. And what's crazy is Pumpkin at 19 years old had to take in like her 13-year-old sister. And I can't think, I mean, if I was a judge, I would think, you know what, for a mom to put that on her 19-year-old child, for a mother to put that responsibility on her 19-year-old child, like I get it at 19, you're an adult. You can move out. You can make your own decisions. But should you be raising your 13-year-old sister, sending her to school, having to buy her school clothes, being there for being her emotional support as she goes through everything that a 13, 14, 15, 16-year-old child goes through? This was Pumpkin that had to step in because June was off uh, gallivanting with any Tom, Dick, and Harry that would pay her any attention. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a judge would look at this and be like, yeah, these documents are documents from Pumpkin when she filed to get custody of Alana. This is what Pumpkin told the courts about her mom to get custody of her sister. All right, let's see. I think I read this one, but I'll read it again. That petitioner is a fit and capable parent and is otherwise qualified to assume primary physical custody of the minor child on a permanent basis. Therefore, the petitioner asserts that it would be in the best interest of the minor child if she is awarded sole physical and legal custody of the minor child. The petitioner asserts that she is more stable. She is in a more stable financial position than the respondent. Therefore, she is more equipped to provide a more fulfilling lifestyle for the minor child on a consistent basis. The petitioner asserts that she is a more stable, that she is in a more stable psychological and mental state than the respondent, and therefore in a greater position to foster a relationship between the minor child and the respondent. The petitioner asserts that she has a supportive family consisting of her husband who is readily available to support the development and care of the minor child on a consistent basis. The petitioner asserts that she has consistently supported the minor child financially. Listen to this. Okay, so for three years, she had Alana and June did not help financially. The petitioner asserts that she has consistently supported the minor child financially. While since the issuance of the order, the respondent has failed to contribute financially to the support and maintenance of the minor child on a consistent basis. Specifically, the petitioner has paid child support and provided financial coverage for all the expenses. This is the petitioner. This is Pumpkin, not June. It says specifically Pumpkin has paid all the support needed for Alana, provided financial coverage for all the expenses related to the care and maintenance of Alana, independent of June. The minor child has signed an election to request that the court award the petitioner with sole physical and legal custody of her. So it says here, like, even the child is requesting to live with her sister. Since the date of the guardianship, which was like April 2019, there has been a change in circumstances materially affecting the minor child and as a result of this such change in circumstances the guardianship should be modified as follows oh. y'all we are having such bad luck with tires okay petitioner should be awarded sole 
physical and legal custody of the minor child. The respondent should be awarded supervised visitation with the minor child in accordance with the court-approved parenting plan. Y'all see that? The respondent should be awarded supervised visitation with the minor child in accordance with the court-approved parenting plan. So not only are they, not only that, but they were requesting supervised visitation. Okay, the respondent should be ordered to pay the petitioner child support in accordance with the child support guidelines of the state of Georgia for the maintenance and support of the minor child on a monthly basis. All right. So this here is basically just saying, listen, oh, that ain't even all here. Okay. The petition has had to hire legal counsel to pursue this action and request reasonable attorney fees. Wherefore, petitioner prays as follows, that the temporary guardianship be modified to provide for the requested change of custody and change in visitation rights for the parties, that the court will award the petitioner sole physical and legal custody of the party, the party's minor child, that the court shall order the respondent to pay the petitioner child support in accordance with the child support guidelines of the state of Georgia, that the court shall order and incorporate a modified visitation plan between the respondent and the minor child that will require the respondent to visit with the minor child under supervision. So at 16 years old, June legally was put under a supervised visitation with her child, with her 16-year-old daughter. Petitioners should be awarded reasonable attorney fees and costs of litigation, including but not limited to court filing fees, further relief requested at the trial of this case, and that the petitioner be awarded additional relief as the court deems just and proper. Okay. So this was Pumpkin's initial filing. And now we are gonna go over um, Alana's affidavit that was filed on the same day. Okay, so this is Alana's filing. Like I said, filed on the same day. Up there, you guys can see the date. All right, affidavit of custody election. My name is Alana Francis Thompson. I've been duly sworn and hereby state the following, that I am 16 years of age, having been born August 28, 2005, that I am competent to testify to the facts in this affidavit. My statements are made voluntarily without pressure or any undue influence of my free act and will. That my mother's name, June Shannon, I would like to live with my older sister, Lauren Efret. I want my sister, Lauren Efret, to be my sole custodian and I desire to live with her on a full-time basis permanently. I would like to visit with my mother when I desire, yet I would like to have a supervisor present when I do decide to visit with her. The supervisor may be my sister. I love my mother, but I feel safer with my sister, and I would like to remain with her. I also enjoy my school, and I feel loved inside my sister's home and in her care. The last page is just where they signed off on it, so I didn't include that one. All right, so this is Alana's statement herself saying, I love my mom, but I feel better at my sister's house. Y'all, we've had four pop tires in a matter of three, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. My son just opened the door to tell me, um, but he walked out. So I texted him. I was like, everything okay? He's like, mom, pop the tire. I don't know what. It's on the new car that we just bought him, so I don't know what, I don't know. Okay. We're not going to look at that one yet. Let's see. Okay. Right, Alana herself didn't feel safe with June, yeah. This is called Motion for Temporary Hearing and Modification of Custody. So it says, come now, Lauren Efret, petitioner in the above styled action and moves this court for an interim order for, for temporary modification of custody and shows the court the following. The petitioner is the biological sister of the minor child, Alana Francis Thompson, a female child born in 2005, um, will be referred to as minor child. Uh, I would assume these can be used for Michael. I would assume. There is no court date yet. There's not been a court date set. 
Um, a temporary guardianship granting the petitioner guardianship has been in, intact since April of 2019. The petitioner has been serving as the guardian and the primary custodian of the minor child. Since the issuance of guardianship order, the petitioner has been serving as the primary physical custodian of the minor child, not the respondent. So they're just saying, since 2019, Alana has been with Pumpkin, not June. Since the issuance of the guardianship, the parties have become residents of Wilkinson County. So they've moved. Um, I think that's what that's stating. Sorry, right, my son is really stressed out over this. I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Since the issuance of the guardianship order, the minor child has resided in the physical custody of the petitioner and her husband. The respondent has exercised limited and sporadic visitation with the minor child. So here it's saying Alana has been with Pumpkin and Josh since 2019. And June has visited limited and sporadic sporadically it's been limited and sporadically it's not been consistent it's not been um timely it's you know it's not been uh planned it's just whenever she wants and it's not been very much the petitioner has filed a petition for change of custody and or modification of visitation and child support in wilkinson county superior court the petitioner asserts that it is in the best interest of the minor child for her to be awarded primary physical custody of the minor child on a temporary basis. The petitioner asserts that it is in the best interest of the minor child for the respondent to be ordered to pay the petitioner monthly child support on behalf of the minor child in accordance with the child support guidelines of the state of Georgia on a temporary and permanent basis. The petitioner requests that the court modify custody on a temporary basis, awarding her primary physical custody of the minor child. The petitioner has incurred legal fees and costs of litigation associated with the filing of this motion. Wherefore, the petitioner moves the court as following. That the court award the petitioner, Pumpkin, primary custody of the child. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um... We just bought two new tires. Now we got to get another one. Um, thank you so much. That the court schedule and issue a rule Nisi, for a temporary hearing to address the issues of custody. That the petitioner be awarded attorney fees for the bringing, for the bringing of the within motion. And that the petitioner have such other and further relief as deemed appropriate by the court. And then it just says respectfully submitted December 6, 2021. All right. So we went over the initial filing, Alana's statement. And let's see. We'll look at the child support worksheet really quickly. It's kind of confusing to be quite honest. And then we're going to look at one other filing. I wonder, though, if June has even considered this, if June has even considered this older custody situation coming back. I wonder if they have considered like, oh, well, when we filed, we said, you know, that, you know, pumpkin, like, oh, I said that I feared for my sister to be with my mom. We requested supervised visitations. They probably haven't thought about it, but when I was looking at the court documents today and just a little bit further down than Michael and June's, like Michael and June's, um, like docket is like right here. And then like two down was June, Lauren and Alana. And I was like, I need to look at that. And as soon as I opened it up, I was like, this could, could be big. I think for Michael's side to have June's own daughters under oath, say that June is mentally, physically, uh, psychologically not in a position to tend to a child. Not, here's the thing. Caitlin is 11. They didn't want 
a lot of there when she was 16, you know. Okay, so here is the Georgia Child Support Worksheet. I'm really confused by it. Um, I don't know, because, you know, when it was reported, it was like, well, they couldn't use her reality TV income because it's not guaranteed. Uh, they were in between contracts at that time, so they had to use her disability. But here, it looks like they used both of their reality TV income because it says June's gross monthly income is 35000 and it says Pumpkins is 10000 So um, for a total of their combined income to be $45,000. And um, down here, I'm very confused. It says pro rata shares of combined income, 77%, 22% equals the 100%. And then it says pro rata shares of basic child support obligation. And it says $2,236. Now here's the thing, here's the thing. I do remember us hearing something about them wanting her to pay like over $2,000, but she like refused. So maybe that's this. Maybe that is the initial worksheet, including her reality TV income, and she wiggled her way out of it. And maybe that's possible. There's no additional filing for child support, though, um, because I was looking for it. I was like, well, where's you know, I thought about it. I was like, well, maybe this was the initial one that they didn't go with because this is June's reality TV income. And she said they didn't, they couldn't base it off that because it wasn't guaranteed. So I do think maybe that's what it is. Um, but I do remember hearing someone say, Maybe Pumpkin said on a live stream, like, oh, they wanted her to pay over $2,000, but she threw a fit over that. So that's probably what this is. Um, because as you guys can see, it says base, basic child support obligation, $2,236. And then it says down here, adjusted child support obligation, $1,739.16. Um, and then it has one under Pumpkin, $496.84. I I so I'm not really sure. I feel like this is probably the older one that, that they wanted. They we're going to use whenever um, they were going off her reality TV income. But there's not a new one. There's not an additional one for me to say, oh, well, here's an amended one. I don't see that. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now, all those were filed. And then February... Um, they amended the petition February 2022. There was an amended petition filed. I can't even, I know I can't even get my ex to pay, Paris and Kane's dad to pay anything, anything, anything. I do remember him. I don't know where Mike is, big Mike. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. They wasn't filming at the time, so she wasn't getting that income. I think that's how, yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so this one was filed um, February 3rd, 2023. It's amended petition for change of custody and child support. Comes now, Lauren Michelle Efred, petitioner in the above styled action and pursuant to Georgia rule, hereby makes and files this her amended petition for change of custody and child support and in support thereof respectfully shows the court as follows. The probate court of Henry County issued a temporary guardianship of minor child, Alana, a female child born August 2005, granting a petitioner guardianship of Alana on a temporary basis. That happened on April 29, 2019. Petitioner is the biological sister of the child at issue in this case. Alana, female born August 2005, petitioner is an adult of the age of majority. Petitioner is a third party relative as contemplated by Georgia rule, Georgia law. Um, petitioner has been the guardian of minor child since the issuance of the temporary guardianship to present date. The child has consistently resided with Pumpkin and her husband since April 29th, 2019. Respondent is the natural mother of the child. So that will be June is the natural mother of the child.
right now. Petitioner and child are both residents of Wilkinson County, Georgia. Respondent, June, is the resident of Baldwin County, Georgia. June is expected to acknowledge service of a summon and the petition or change of custody and child support as amended, as well as submit herself to the jurisdiction and venue of this court. So just saying like June has to accept the um, uh, the summons and then she has to show up to court. Petitioner knows of no other person and not a party to this action who has physical custody of Alana or claims to have any rights or visitations with Alana. The biological father of Alana is David Michael Thompson. He and June were never married, nor did he ever legitimate Ne'er, nor did he ever legitimate say a child, legitimized said child. The biological father is not a legal father and thus is not required to be named as a party to or served notice of this proceeding. I'm kind of confused by that because I heard before like, oh, Sugar Bear is not on her birth certificate, but her last name is Thompson and they were together. So I am kind of curious why he didn't sign the birth certificate if he didn't. And by the looks of it, it looks like he didn't. I know, right? I mean, no, she, yep. Um, the biological father is not the legal father and thus not required to be named as a party to or serve notice of this proceeding. And at this state, the father of an illegitimate, illegitimate child, unless he legitimizes it, has no standing with references to the child. It just states the rule. Petitioner fears for the safety and well-being. So, Pumpkin fears for the safety and well-being of Alana if Alana were to be in the physical custody of June. Pumpkin asserts that she is in the better in a better position mentally and physically to care for Alana versus June. Pumpkin has um, June has exhibited poor judgment in the past regarding decisions pertaining, pertaining to Alana. June has suffered with mental and psychological disabilities. Hence, Pumpkin asserts that it is in the best interest of Alana for Pumpkin to be awarded soul and physical custody. Upset child. Pumpkin believes that June is not psychologically, physically, or financially fit to serve as the primary custodian of Alana. Further, uh, June has engaged in erratic behavior that leads a lot uh, Pumpkin to believe that June is unable to address the best interests of the child and that it would cause harm to the child to be in June's custody. June has not exercised consistent parenting time with the child over the past three years. So this is... February 2022. February 2022. That they're still saying June has not been consistent. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. If you're not married, you still have to like do the birth certificate, I guess. I mean, you, okay, so if you're not married in the state of Georgia and you have a child, You can sign the birth certificate, but you're still not legally. Is that what you're saying? It's so confusing. And it's different from state to state, so it's so hard to really know. Okay. So June has not exercised consistent parenting with Alana in the past three years. Um, Petitioner is fit and capable person and is otherwise qualified to assume primary physical custody of the child on a permanent basis. Therefore, the petitioner, which is obviously Pumpkin, asserts that it will be in the best interest of the child, Alana, for Pumpkin to be awarded sole physical and legal custody of Alana. Pumpkin asserts that she is more stable, that she is in a more stable financial position than June. Therefore, Pumpkin is more equipped to provide a more fulfilling lifestyle for the child on a consistent basis. Pumpkin asserts that she has a supportive family consisting of her husband who is readily available to support the development and care of the child on a permanent basis. The petitioner asserts that she is 
consistently supported the child financially since the issuance of the order awarding her temporary guardianship. The respondent, June, has failed to contribute financially to the support and maintenance of the child on a consistent basis. So there was one that was filed in December stating this, and then another one, this one, is filed two months later, still stating that she is still not paying child support. Petitioner shows that the child's mother, June, is an able-bodied individual and capable of earning a living to support herself and that of the minor child. As such, Pumpkin seeks child support from the respondent on a temporary and permanent basis for the support and maintenance of the child if Pumpkin is granted custody of the child. Pumpkin shows that she has incurred attorney fees for the litiga litigation of this action and she requests that she be awarded a reasonable amount in attorney fees and expenses of litigation from respondent in accordance with the law. Wherefore, petitioner prays that she be awarded sole physical and legal custody of the child, that she be awarded temporary and permanent custody of the child from the child's mother, June, for the support, educa education, and maintenance of the child, that the court order and incorporate and incorporate incorporate a modified visitation plan between june and alana that would require june to visit with the child under supervision the petitioner be awarded reasonable attorney fees and expenses of litigation including without limitation court filing fees and for such other further relief as the court deems just and proper under the circumstances this is the second day of february 2022 That's Alana's document. Okay. I think. Um, something else that I noticed. Now, I didn't buy these. Now, before you buy something, you can kind of see it a little bit. It'll tell, tell you what it is. You know, obviously the legal name, like motion for temporary hearing and modification or whatever. And um, as I was going through all the documents, I, I kept seeing this document. I'll tell you guys what it is. It makes me believe that they were requesting permission to do, like, share some of this on the show, I guess. I'll tell you guys what it's called. But I wasn't buying that. I'm like, I don't care about that. Um, yes, June wanted Pumpkin to adopt Alana, so June did not have to pay child support. Exactly. That's for this case. Not, not, uh, um, this. So when I was looking up the paperwork for Pumpkin's case, not this, not, um, Michael's. If I see anything like that on Michael's case, I'll let you guys know. Um, So motion to use recording devices pursuant to Rule 22 on recording of judicial proceedings. So they were basically like requesting maybe to have cameras in the room, in, in the courtroom, I think. Certification of service on subpoena for production of documentary evidence, BMB talent. Certification of service on subpoena for production of documentary evidence, Jitani Incorporated. Jitani. Certification of service on subpoena for production of documentary evidence. It be America Incorporated. Motion for commissions authorizing the issuance of out-of-state subpoena. Uh, deuces to, I don't know what, that, that's like Latin. Order of issuance, order to issue a subpoena, two Latin words, to ITV America Incorporated, California, dated March 9, 2022. Order to issue a subpoena, two Latin terms, to ITV America Incorporated, New York, dated March 9, 2022. Certification of services on subpoenas for production of documentary evidence, BBC Studios, America Incorporated. I don't know what that is. Uh, 
Um, no, this is not for the upcoming court date. This is for the one that was with Pumpkin in June. So I um, want, because I don't recall them ever, you know, they recorded when they were in there with their attorneys, but I don't ever recall them like recording them going to court, right? Hey, Shelly. See, that's what I thought this was, um, the request, because when I talked to the lawyer in Georgia, I said, you know, when they uh, when they do have their court hearings for Michael versus Drew Shaven, I want to go. And he was like, um, you should be able to go. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to go. And I said, what about recording in there? And he said, well, you would have to like file a um, request to record. He said, but I don't know if they would actually let you, you know, either party could turn that down. Like Michael's side or June Shannon's side could deny your request. And so I was thinking, I was like, if June wanted cameras in there to record for the show, then they would have to let me because you can't do one and not the other one. So I think they were trying to record I think that's what that was. Now, I don't know what all these certification of service also paying up for production. I don't know what that is. Let me look it up. Of service also paying up for production. Wait, I don't think I'm saying this right. Certification, okay, certification of service. On subpoena. On for production. I don't think that's what it's saying. Production of service. Production of documents. So, I'm going to try to get in touch with this lawyer friend that I have through my husband and see if these documents can be used in the upcoming court case between Michael and June. I would assume they could. They requested the production to turn over footage. That's, that's what the Latin is. Oh, thank you. So there's no hearing set for Michael versus June Shannon. It looks like that's. I guess that's what it is. I'll ask, you know, too, but I think that's what it was. I think they were basically requesting to have cameras in the courtroom and for this to be a storyline and for them to actually be able to, I guess, like put it all out there, maybe show the subpoenas. I don't know, you know. That's why I don't understand how she has Caitlin when she didn't raise her own kids. Exactly. So. And as you guys know, we were told that uh, Caitlin is already under contract for the show, that she is under contract to appear on the show. Now, I don't know if that was put into place before Anna passed away. I don't know if Anna agreed to let her be on the show while they were filming for what was going on with Anna. I don't know if Anna did sign to have her girls on the show, but June had to sign to extend it. I'm not sure. But I just know that she is under contract from what I was told. Has Michael and Caitlin seen? Has Michael and Caitlin sister seen? Yes. So from yes. Kylie and Caitlin did get to see each other after Christmas on New Year's Eve. After Caitlin got back from Disney. Caitlin went and visited Kylie and Michael. 
And I think there's been like one other time that they've seen each other. Why is Pumpkin unable to go live on TikTok? I heard she kept getting reported, but I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. I saw on Reddit where it was like she kept getting reported, but I did see her live last night on Facebook. And one thing that I noticed is on TikTok, she would have six, seven, eight, nine, sometimes a thousand people on her TikTok lives. Last night on Facebook, she only had about 150 people on there. Um, and two, she was actually live on like a website on her, like their website, but she also somehow was feeding it through to Facebook. So she wasn't primarily live on Facebook. It was on her website, but it fed it through to YouTube. Like right now, the live that I'm doing with you guys, it automatically feeds it through to Rumble. So I'm actually live on Rumble as well. So she has something like that set up. And Josh come in and they were talking about it. And she was like, I can't get kicked off no more. I can't get kicked off no more. Uh, can't report me no more. And she started saying the F word like repeatedly. She's like, F, 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 F. Don't matter. Don't matter. Can't nobody kick me off. And I'm thinking, you can still get kicked off Facebook, though. Like, I get it. You're on your site, but it's feeding through to Facebook. So you can. And um, some people was like, oh, no, don't don't talk like that. She was like, oh, my bad. Sorry for my older people in the chat. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. But, um, yeah, she definitely, I was like, she must be forgetting that it's feeding through to Facebook because you can absolutely get kicked off Facebook, too. I wonder if Michael could have sugar bears a witness of some kind for when Anna went and stayed with him and Jennifer after they separated or whatever. Have you? Probably so. Um, I'm going to answer a few questions and then we're going to go ahead and end it for the night because I do know it's late. But I just wanted to go ahead and do this with you guys because tomorrow I don't know if I'm going to be able to work any tomorrow. And I mentioned it on my last live. And I was like, I better go ahead and get this out there for somebody else does it. For somebody else, I done spent all day, literally all day. I was literally going through documents for hours. And then I had to buy the documents, download the documents, email the documents to myself, put a watermark on them, and then send them back to myself after I watermarked them. So I was like, and I was like, I don't want to mention this. And then Monday, get on YouTube and see that somebody ran and did it. Uh, because they got the idea for me, you know? So I was like, I gotta go ahead and do it. Have I spoke to Sugar Bear lately? I, should do, I spoke to Sugar Bear a couple of days ago. Uh, me and Sugar Bear speak sporadically, you know? Uh, I'll check in with him uh, every few days or whatever. I felt really bad because he spent the holidays alone. He spent Thanksgiving alone and Christmas alone. And I was like, dude, you know, if I could, I would, you could come down here and, uh, Hang out with my family. Why is Alana's custody in dispute? So this was just a couple of years ago. So basically, when I was looking at the documents from Mama June and Michael Carwell's custody battle, just a little bit below it showed Lauren, Efred, Ju Shannon, and Alana Thompson. I was like, oh, yeah, that's from when Pumpkin got custody of Alana. So I was like, I wonder if there's anything interesting in there. Is it just cut and dry? Hey, I want custody of my sister. And June said, oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Or is it, I want custody of my sister and this is why. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta look. And when I clicked on the first one, in the first filing, she said, I fear for my sister. You know, like, I, like, um, she's not, like, she makes erratic decisions. She's not psychologically physically, financially able to care for Alana. And Alana was 16 at this point. Doesn't she have a girlfriend? Who knows at this point? I think Sugar Bear likes to entertain women. Uh, I don't know if he has anything serious, but he might not tell me if he does. I mean, because we do talk and I do check in on him. Um, but if I mean, if I asked him, hey, you got a girlfriend? He'd probably be like, yeah, I'm talking to a little something. But um, him and Heather broke up, if that's who you're asking about. Him and Heather broke up, so they're not dating. I'm jumping through hoops, going through custody with no one. Oh. June wants social security money that her granddaughter would get. So here's something else that that lawyer told me that I thought was interesting. 
So I asked that lawyer a few questions. Um, I'm like, what about filming for the show? And the lawyer said, more than likely, Michael's attorney will be. He said, if I was his attorney, I would file an injunction to keep Caitlin off the show. Um, or I would either file to keep her off the show or file um, a petition that any monies that she makes goes into a trust fund where two people are on the account besides Caitlin. That way it would be Michael and, and June. That way neither one of them can spend any money without the other one having to sign off on it, right? So this is what the lawyer told me. He said, if I was Michael's attorney, I would file that injunction. Also, wow, what was the other one? Somebody mentioned, oh, also he said, if I was Michael's attorney, I would contact the social security office and let them know that, you know, obviously Anna passed away. She leaves behind two children. And here's the thing. Michael has custody of Kylie. So say he contacts the social security office about Kylie's money, um, which from what my source told me, uh, Kylie's money will go into a savings account for like her college and stuff. That's where Michael plans to put Kylie's money. It's going to go into a savings account for her college and stuff. So I don't know if Michael has started working on it yet or if he just mentioned it to the person that I speak with. Um, but Michael or his attorney could contact the Social Security office and say, hey, Anna, you know, Marie Carvel passed away. She has two children. They're going to be filing for benefits for her children soon. However, there is a custody battle going on right now over this child, the oldest one, Caitlin Shannon. Um, so there needs to be a hold put on that check, the money, until the custody situation is um, figured out. So I did see that. I, I did find that out from talking to the lawyer. Like you can file to have, or you can have the Social Security office um, kind of put it on hold until um, custody is figured out. And you can also file the injunction to keep Caitlin off TV. And if, or if you don't want to keep her off TV, uh, if there's already a contract in place that maybe she can't get out of, you can file that her money going to a trust fund that you and June be over. Exactly. I've not heard that Alana is pregnant. Um, I haven't heard that. None of my sources have told me that. So you can't say she can't provide. You can't say that she can't provide financially and then ask for two thousand dollars in child support. Yeah. I think that check for Social Security is a lot of money and June wants it. I don't, yeah, I don't know how much it'll be, but the girl is also in elementary school. Who's going to help her with any kind of school work projects, et cetera, when June can't even read, see? I know Pumpkin should also look at how to protect her own kids because June will shamelessly, shamelessly try that again. Well, my thing, in the state of Alabama, if you are a felon, you can't receive a minor Social Security. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if it's the same for Georgia. Yeah, she's in Georgia right now. But I do know they plan on moving because they have been, talked about that like, on TikToks. Um, anyways, you guys, once I started going through these documents from 2021, 2022, Pumpkin's own sworn statements to the court saying, I don't trust my mama with my 16-year-old sister. I don't even want her to visit unsupervised. If she even visits with her, I want it to be supervised. And then saying, in the past three years, she ain't even really visited her. It's been so sporadic. It's just kind of been whenever. And it hasn't even been that much. And she hasn't even paid child support. So I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. And I know June has changed. She's not as bad as she was, at least, because she has kind of settled down. She's not running the road. She's not hotel hopping. You know, so... Whether or not she's sober, I don't know that for a fact, but I know that she is at least in a little bit better place than she was. But still, she's way too soon in her sobriety, if she is sober, to throw an 11-year-old in her lap. 
Um, does Michael live in Georgia or Alabama? Michael lives in Georgia. Well, I can tell you that I was told that um, when Anna would have treatments, Eldridge would take her to the treatments, but Eldridge had to go to work. So uh, other people would show up and stay the rest of the time and then bring Anna home. That the most that Anna saw her family was during filming. I was told that. So I was told that the most that she saw them was during filming for her last birthday. I mean, they didn't even make a big deal out of it. They didn't throw her a party. But guess what? For Pumpkin's birthday just the other day, they all went out to eat. They all went and celebrated Pumpkin. But Anna's last birthday, from what I was told, Anna's grandmother and Anna's husband, Eldridge, took Anna out to eat. And I was told that Anna, her feelings got hurt a little bit, that they didn't really do anything for her birthday. It was her last birthday. And they, and I was even told that Pumpkin was even like, don't think you're going to get special treatment just because you got cancer. So, and that was something that Anna told somebody that told me. That person heard it directly from Anna. So, anyways, you guys, leave me your thoughts. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on this situation. Like, share, subscribe. I'm sorry that this one was so long, but there was a lot that we had to go over. And like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to work tomorrow, possibly Sunday a little bit, but definitely Monday we're going to hit the girl running. I got some stuff we're going to cover over on the Fatal Files channel. Going to talk about Scott Peterson, um, the, what's it called? What's it called? The Innocence, what's it called? Innocence Project. The Innocence Project has taken on Scott Peterson's case. I guess they think that he could potentially be innocent. So I'm thinking I'm going to cover that. You guys let me your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe to my other channel, Fatal Files with LB. If you can't find it, I know some people said they can't find it when they type it in the search tab. You can go to the description box below and you'll find all my links. You'll find my link to Innocence Project of California. Thank you. You can find my Fatal Files link. You can find my membership link. You can find um, uh, Mothership Explorers link. You can find uh, TikTok link, blah, 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 all of it. But did Pumpkin ever adopt Alana? She never adopted her. She just got custody of her. But what was crazy is when she got full legal custody of her, June thought that she was signing off for Pumpkin to adopt Alana. So whenever they came to June about child support, she's like, child support? You adopted her. And she's like, no, I didn't. I didn't adopt her. I just got custody of her. And she's like, oh, well, I thought you were adop I thought you were adopting her. I thought that's what we were doing. And she Pumpkin asked her, so you mean to tell me you would rather me adopt her so you don't have to pay child support? And she was like, yeah. Yeah. You know, so she literally said it out of her own mouth that she thought that Pumpkin was adopting a lot of That's what she thought she was signing off on. And she would rather that. So she didn't have to pay child support. Anyways, good night. Stay warm. Stay safe. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Thank you to the new members that we got in the past week. Thank you to all my regulars. Thank you to if you're just dropping in. Thank you to the super chats. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. Good night, guys.